Representative Newberry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If it's the appropriate time, I have an amendment. It's the appropriate time. Proceed. Thank you. I'd like to move LC 000859-5. Representative Newberry moves amendment LC 000859-5. That is seconded by Leader Filippi, Representative Roberts, Representative Nadone, Representative Place, Representative Lyle, Representative Quattrochi, Representative Price. Proceed, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this deals with the Auditor General language specifically because the article is kind of a mishmash. That's on page five. I've always been sort of a lukewarm supporter of the concept of an inspector general. I do support it, but I have a lot of reservations about it, in part because I think it's very difficult to have a truly independent inspector general. No one's really independent. Either they're going to be elected by the voters, in which case they're going to be political in that sense, or they're going to have to be appointed by somebody, be it the governor, the attorney general, this body, et cetera. And there's going to be costs associated with the creation of a new bureaucracy and so forth. There's actually some decent arguments against having an inspector general. That all said, I strongly support the idea of having somebody whose job it is to really go through our government, and that's their full-time job, to root out waste and fraud and so forth, because we know it occurs. I know people like to throw it around, but it does occur. So when I saw this language in the budget, I was glad to see, and I think it's a good idea to expand the powers of the Auditor General to do that. The problem is the language is written, in my view, is way too vague. And I'm going to read it. I know you all have it, but just so people at home watching you know, it says, the Auditor General shall supervise, coordinate, and or conduct investigations and inspections or oversight reviews with the purpose of preventing and detecting fraud, waste, abuse, and mismanagement in the expenditure of public funds. That's a pretty broad blank check to the Auditor General. It doesn't put any restrictions on it. And understand what happens. The Auditor General is an employee of this body, essentially. It's an employee of the JCLS, Joint Committee on Legislative Services. And I know a lot of you know this, particularly the veterans, but some of you who are new may not know this. The JCLS is a committee of five and it runs the legislature, it runs this building. It consists of the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader of the House, the Minority Leader of the House, the Senate President, and the Minority Leader of the Senate. So it has three of the majority party, whoever that happens to be, it's been Democrats for a long time, but could easily be Republicans in theory, and it was at one time, and it has three members of the House and two of the Senate. And what that means for practical purposes is that the JCLS is effectively run by the Speaker of the House, whoever that happens to be. And that's fine, I don't really mind, it doesn't have a problem with that. The JCLS, by the way, does have power, but it rarely meets. When I was minority leader for six years, we never had a meeting, and you know what? There was really no reason to meet, to be honest. I know for perception purposes, we probably should meet on a regular basis. We don't, but that's a different issue. The point is this. Because the JCLS, unless there's some true emergency, doesn't actually meet, but generally defers to the Speaker of the House, that gives the Speaker of the House a lot of power to run the employees, the bureaucracy, and so forth. When I look at the existing language, and I'm not suggesting Speaker Mattiello or anybody in this room would do anything wrong, but we're creating language for the future. And the last Speaker of the House spent some time in federal prison. So we don't always get good people in charge of this place. I do not want to give the power to any one person to effectively direct investigations against whoever they want to without some kind of check on that power. Oftentimes, as you know, we can see this at the federal level, and both parties do this in Washington, the investigation becomes the punishment, even if the person is innocent. All my amendment does is say, before the Auditor General can invoke an investigation, they need to notify the five members of the JCLS and get approval. They can do it in executive session. I don't want to hear any objections. This will breach confidentiality. I'm sure someone out there is going to say that. It's not going to harm the investigative process. It's not going to breach confidentiality. This amendment makes a lot of sense, it makes us all look good, and it'll make the public feel much, much better about this process, which I think is a good idea, it just needs to be fleshed out more. So I ask you to please support it. Okay, Representative Blazewski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I rise in opposition to this amendment. So for those that don't know, the Auditor General is the legislative audit agency for the legislature in the state of Rhode Island. And its function is to provide independent, reliable information to us to help us do our job as legislators and for the state to take a look at the state's financial condition, to look at how federal funds are used, to make sure that our programs are working efficiently and effectively. And it's important, obviously, as part of that function to make sure that the Auditor General's office is as depoliticized as possible. We've expanded that charge in this article to include uh, independent investigatory powers to root out fraud, waste, and abuse it, similar to what an, an inspector general would do, 
but without the expense that you'd incur if we had had an inspector general's office. It's within the auditor general's office. What this amendment does and why we should reject it is that it immediately politicizes any investigation conducted by the auditor general's office. And any investigation would have to go through a vote of a, of a five member committee that is made up of three Democrats and two Republicans by definition as of right now. And the politicization of that information that we get and the investigatory powers is really a mistake. And for those reasons, uh, Mr. Speaker and uh, colleagues, I really urge to uh, defeat this amendment. Thank you. Leader Filippi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Deputy Whip Wazajewski. I, I do appreciate your comments. Uh, I don't agree with them. Uh, and I don't agree with them because sometimes you can't take the politics out of politics. Uh, we've put forward proposals for an Auditor General, and, and we tried as hard as possible to figure out a way that people from all different branches of government would have some say in the process. People from different parties within those branches of government, government would have some say in the process. Uh, I think if we're going to keep this within JCLS and have an Auditor General, it's probably could be even more politicized if it's just under the control of the Speaker of the House. Um, I think that if we bring some bipartisanship to it, even though it would still have a majority Democrats on the JCLS, I think it would go a long way in making sure that the Auditor General could never be weaponized for, for the purpose of political retribution. You know, if we don't pass this amendment, you know, we've always asked for an independent Inspector General. If we don't pass this amendment, I think we will have a dependent Auditor General. And I just think that poses a lot of problems going forward. Uh, not necessarily because the Speaker, I don't think he would ever abuse it, but we don't know who's coming next. We don't know who's going to be in that chair 10 years from now. And this body in JCLS will really have no way to have any oversight to determine whether an adjust, uh, investigation is justified. Uh, we may never even know if there's an investigation out there that isn't even justified that's being conducted for political purposes. I think this is a necessary check and balance when we're empowering one person to have such strong investigatory powers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chairwoman Serpa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would encourage the members to vote against this amendment. Um, my colleagues who represent one of, the one of the three towns that I represent, we recently had an experience in that town over some problems with the sewer system. Um, sewers were going to be put in, in, in that town, and the voters did not want them. They borrowed from the infrastructure bank at 6%, and they were having the residents of the town borrow at 12%. So they were, the town, this specific town, was essentially making money again on the people who would be the sewer users. And I very honestly don't recall seeking the speaker's permission to do this with Senator Raptakis, and if I should have, I apologize now, speaker, you don't have to yell at me later. Um, but we asked the Auditor General to take a look at that town's books and to do an independent, thorough investigation of the condition of that town's finances. And lo and behold, he ruled Oops, sorry, thank you. He ruled on the side of the taxpayers that indeed the town fathers in this particular town are overcharging. And in fact, you helped us pass a piece of legislation last week that this town can no longer charge at the rate of 6%, but at 0.5%. And this was at the recommendation of the Auditor General. So I think his opinion is highly respected. Um, and that town is made up of Democrats and Republicans of, alike. It has an active page on social media, and I read the comments closely, and I can assure you it was not a political decision. I think the residents of the towns recognized that. In fact, they appreciated that we as legislators, and I thank my fellow legislators from that town, for getting the Auditor General's opinion. So that's why I would encourage you to defeat this. I think expanding this office will be sufficient. Thank you. Whip Chippendale. Thank you, Speaker. The Auditor General, certainly, his office is, is invaluable. Uh, the work that they do, and, and particularly this Auditor General, has been extremely helpful for what we do, particularly in oversight, because we hear from him quite a bit. But in general, he is a tool for the state. I think the uh, assertion that adding transparency and democracy to the process of starting an investigation 
is absurd. That, that, that's not a political, it's not a politicization of the process. We go to great lengths in this body to ensure that there's transparency throughout government. What are we afraid of to have five people who already make most of the decisions in this building anyway, look at an issue and maybe decide, hey, this appears to be frivolous, let's not do it. Or this appears to be perfectly appropriate, let's do it. Where's the harm in that? That's the committee process that we all revere. What are we afraid of? The Auditor General, under these new responsibilities, could come upon criminal wrongdoing. And he has a legal obligation to report that criminal wrongdoing. We are weaponizing his office with no oversight. Again, I, I'm not talking about anyone in particular. We don't know who the speaker is five, six, seven speakers down the road could be a vindictive person who has it out for a department or a person in a department. I want oversight. I want five people who are respected and elected to say, this is appropriate, proceed. Or, this is completely inappropriate, don't proceed. Which, by the way, will all be done in an executive session, so it's not a public show. Folks who are adding transparency and democracy to it, you're really gonna vote against this? Thank you. Representative Newberry. Just very briefly, I don't want to repeat what my colleague said, but the two arguments against this are not arguments against this. Uh, Chairwoman Serpa's story is fine, but that has nothing to do with this. And my good friend, Deputy Whip Lezuszewski, that was the best you could do on this. That's good, but this is not politicizing anything at all. The reality is most investigations that any Auditor General are going to look into are going to be things that are not going to be controversial. The whole point is to make sure that the five people that make up the leadership of these two chambers at a given time have the opportunity to sort of sign off on something before it goes down the rabbit hole. And it prevents one person from abusing the process. How on earth anybody can oppose that is beyond me. Representative Newberry, thank you for your argument. Please don't grade other representatives' arguments in the future. That was inappropriate. And a lot of us might agree with Representative uh, Blaise Juski more than you. And everyone has a right to their opinion. Reasonable minds do and can differ. Lita Shikachi. I think I may be one of those reasonable minds because I do differ uh, oh. with my good friend. I don't know if we would say reasonable, Lita, <laughs> but go ahead. It's been commented to be many things, Mr. Speaker. But the reason I, I oppose this is really more of a rhetorical question to my friends across the aisle. As all these years I've been here, seven years in the General Assembly, I think seven years you always want an Inspector General. The Inspector General that, that I remember never had a, a JCLF review, JCLS review. Um, I think it's a good thing. I, I just personally don't think, uh, I, I look at this as like the Attorney General. Before the Attorney General would launch an investigation, he's got to go get five politicians to agree on it. I just think the independence of it, uh, and, and we can grade it if, if and when it works, and if we need to make changes two, three, four, five years from down the road, every single year we're in session and we'll be able to make those changes. But for right now, I like the independence of it, and I think it's a good thing, and I urge defeat of the amendment. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Leader Filippi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I will answer your rhetorical question, Leader Sakarchi. Uh, our opinion for an Auditor General didn't have five politicians, but we did have a board overseeing the Auditor General, and that was a bipartisan board appointed from many different branches of government. Uh, respectfully, it's, it's my friends on the other side who have sought to not have an Auditor General, excuse me, an Inspector General, and instead empower the Auditor General. And we're saying to ourselves, if it's going to be the Auditor General and not an Inspector General, how can we have some type of oversight so it doesn't become politicized? So. I, I prefer an inspector general. If we're going to have an auditor general, this is a good idea to preserve the sanctity of those investigations and the public's faith in those investigations to know that a bipartisan group of five people looked at it and said, go, go do that investigation. Uh, if we don't pass this, the public's not going to even know who gave the permission for the investigation. So I know it was a rhetorical question, but I, I just had to answer it. Thank you, Leader Sakarchi. Representative McLaughlin. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, member, members of the House, maybe I missed a part of the conversation, but uh, I believe on, on the amendments, someone stood up and said, uh, basically, 
they haven't met in six years. Uh, I'm like, okay, uh, you know, uh, that's their job, you know? And my only area of concern is that we're focusing on bringing five people in, you know? When we should be rectifying the situation, maybe an amendment should be put into, uh, let's say we meet every 30 days or every six months or every year. So, you know, for that reason, uh, I, I think we should take little steps. I think we're taking big steps right now. Let's rectify what we need to rectify first. Thank you. There are no other lights on the amendment. Clerk, unlock the machine. All in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 19 in favor, 54 against. The amendment fails.